to continue and bring the message about uh, we the fathers as mediators to the glory of God. Amen. Reverend Sampley, we are happy with what you are teaching us uh, in the men uh, leadership. And even when you came the other day, and therefore just take your time and uh, praise God. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Let's open our Bibles to Psalm 128. Psalm 128. Uh, my assignment this morning is to speak on a father as a mediator. I would like to read the first six verses. Ningependa kusoma aya sita za kwanza. Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in obedience to Him. You, you may read all six. Yes, who walk in obedience to Him, you will eat the fruit of your labor. Blessings and prosperity will be yours. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children will be like olive shoots around your table. Yes, this is the blessing of the man who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life, and may you live to see your children's children. Peace be on Israel. Uh, Zaburi mia na ishirina nane. Heri kila mtu amchae buwana. Haendae katika njia yake. Tabu ya mikono yake hakika utaila. Utakuwa heri na kwako kwema. Mkeo atakuwa kama mzabibu uzao uh, vi, viumbiani mwa nyumbani yako Wanao kama miche ya mzeituni Wakizunguka meza yako Tazama atabarikiwa hivyo Yule amchae bwana Bwana atakubariki tokako zayuni Uone heri na wa Israeli Siku zote za maisha yako Nam ukao uk, uk, Ukawaone wana wanao amani kae na Israeli. If you have your notebooks in front of you and you're taking notes, I would like to begin this message by making two statements. Kama una nakala yako na unaandika ni mekpenda kwanza ujumbe huu ni kiwa ni unasemi mbili. That I hope we all agree with. Ambao na tumaini ya kwamba tutakubaliana nayo. The first statement is this. Ajambo la kwanza ni hili. That God intends for the ideal family to have a godly mother and a godly father. That this is the way God designed marriage. Do you agree with that? Say amen. According to the Bible, marriage is between a man and a woman. You agree with that? Say amen. The second statement I want to make to you is this. And that is that the Bible describes what the ideal father should be. And do you agree with that statement? Now one of the things I love about God's word is what Andy said earlier. Is that the Bible tells us the real truth about the men and women in scripture. So the Bible tells us about the real, but the Bible also tells us about the ideal or the model who we should be. And so you find in scripture men who were good fathers and men who were bad fathers. For example, how many of you know who wrote most of the Psalms in your Bible? It was King who? 
King David. We know him as one of the greatest men in all of God's word. And yet when you study the Bible, you find that although he was a successful king, he was not a very successful father. And so the Bible teaches us the real and the ideal. The Bible deals with real people who struggled with real relationships. David raised a son that wanted to overthrow him. But the Bible also describes for us how we as fathers should fulfill that calling according to scripture. It shows us in the Bible who and what we should be as fathers. And so this morning I hope I can offer some help for us fathers regarding how can we how we can be godly mediators. Because what our brother said just a moment ago is true for a nation to change there must be a change in children and for children to change there must be a change in fathers and mothers and so I'm going to give you four characteristics of what it is to be a godly mediator. But before I list those off for you, I would like to begin with a definition. What is a mediator? The dictionary defines a mediator as a go-between. Or, or a moderator. But did you know the Bible or the dictionary also describes a mediator as an intercessor? And so if that's true, then I want you to consider with me this morning that a father who is a mediator will be a man of faith, first of all. He will be a man who intercedes for his children. Who leads them in faithful service to the Lord. And if you would be the mediator God wants you to be, the first thing Psalm 128 points out is that you need to give attention to your faith. Notice in the first verse of Psalm 128 that it talks about faith and it talks about a man's faith. It says, blessed are the fathers who fear the Lord. Now, do you have your Bibles open to verse 1? Some of the translations will say, blessed is the man who fears the Lord. When, but we know this psalm is speaking about fathers because verse 3 refers to wives. And so we read it this morning as blessed are the fathers who fear the Lord, who walk in obedience to him. Many years ago in the United States and the churches, we thought the only way to reach families was to reach the children. We would send buses all over the cities. We would pick up boys and girls. We would bring them to church. And how many of you know those are all good things to do and good things that need to be done? We had the idea that if we could reach the child, then you could get the family. You could get to the father. But what we found out is that in some cases, the opposite was true. We found out there were a lot of fathers who were more than happy to put their child on a bus and have their child away from them for an hour or two. 
And so the church could babysit their children and they could sleep in. Or they could go run errands or they could go to the store or they could go out and eat or whatever. We now understand the value of men's ministry. Sasa tunaelewa uthamani wa huduma ya wanaume. That the key to reaching a family for the Lord and keeping that family for the Lord. Ufungua wa kufikia jamii na kudumisha ile jamii is to reach the father. Ni kufikia baba. That the key to faith in a family is the faith of that father. Ya kwamba ufungua wa imani katika jamii ni imani ya yule baba. The key to being a father who mentors and mediates his children and their relationship with the Heavenly Father is for that man to be a man of faith. And I want you to notice the faith of this man given to us in the Word of God in verse number 1. So keep your Bible there at Psalm 128. Verse 1, it says, Blessed is the Father who fears the Lord. How many of you know that word fear means reverence? It means respect. It means an awe for the Lord. This is the Old Testament way of saying put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed is the man who puts his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a picture of a man being saved. And verse number 4 of Psalm 128 says this will be the blessing for the man who fears the Lord. It's talking about his faith in the Lord. And I want to say to you this morning that the wisest decision a father will ever make is your decision to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the wisest decision you can make for yourself and for your family. There are a thousand other important decisions that wise fathers have to make. Where will you work? Where will you get your education? What kind of career will you pursue? Where, where are you going to live? Where are you going to bring up your family? What church will you attend? And all of these decisions will be lived out in front of the children that you are raising. But still the wisest decision you will ever make is that initial decision to give your life to Christ. The Bible says in Proverbs 9.10 that mediators must be wise because it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of Wisdom. And at the risk of repeating myself over and over, this means that the wisest decision you will ever make, fathers, is to invite Jesus Christ into your heart and into your life. And by the way, it's the manliest thing you'll ever do. Our society, at least in the United States, is confused about manhood. But being a man is not based upon how much weight you can lift in a gym. Or how many fights you can win. Being a man is about receiving the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ into your heart as Lord and Savior. That's the most courageous thing any man can ever choose. My pastor growing up used to say that he used to say that any sissy can live for the devil. Any the devil. <laughs> but, it, but it takes a real man to live a life of holiness before the Lord. Amen. How many of you would agree that every life, your life, my life, their lives, every life has a center? 
ya kwamba kila maisha iko na ukati kati wake every one of our lives have something around which our lives revolve ya kwamba kila maisha iko na kitu cha kiini ambapo kila maisha ya kila mtu inazungukia hapo hapo for some of you fathers your life revolves around work na baadhi yenu maisha yako inazunguka katika kazi that's the center of your life it's all you think about it's all you engage in it's it, all about It's everything in your life is what you do in your work your work your work. Ya kwamba maisha yako ni kuhusu yale ambayo unafanya kila siku kazi yako kazi yako kazi yako. I would like to challenge you and say that if the center of your life is only and always about work then your life is out of balance. Ya kwamba kama maisha yako ni kila mara ni kazi basi hauko katika mizani mizuri. For other fathers the center of their lives might be sports or recreation. Aya baba wengine maisha yao ni kuhusu michezo na kuji kujivinjari. All these fathers think about are sports and sports games and watching games and attending games and participating in sports. Kila kuenda katika michezo, kuwaza michezo na kuenda katika michezo. And there's nothing wrong with sports. I love sports. Kitu kibaya na mchezo na penda mchezo. But if that's what our lives center around, if that's what all if that's all you think about as a father then your life is out of balance. Lakini kama hiyo peke yake kuhusu mchezo kama baba. And I want to say something next that may shock you. Because some men believe the center of their lives is their family. But did you know that even if your family is the most important thing in your life? Your life is still out of balance. Because the center of your life should be the Lord Jesus Christ. If Christ, if Christ is in the center your family will be balanced kama kristo ayuko kwenye your recreation will be balanced your work will be balanced maisha kazi yako itakuwa na Do you know this verse from Philippians 1:21 wa filipi 1:21 Paul said paul anasema for me to live is christ kwangu mimi paul anasema kwangu mimi kuishi ni kristo For me to live is Christ. Wangu mimi kuishi ni Kristo. And to die is gain. Na kufa ni faida. So here's the question. Swali ni hili. What is life to you? Je, maisha ni nini kwako? What is life to me? E maisha ni nini kwangu? It's good to be at a conference like this. But we have to be real. And if I were to ask you to put your own word in that sentence, what word put there? Would you say for me to live is work? Would you say for me to live is sports or recreation Je, kwangu mimi kuishi ni mambo ya michezo na kujivinjari Would you say for me to live is family Je, utasema kwangu mimi kuishi ni jamii Or can you honestly say for me to live is Christ Na je, nani atakuwa mkweli kusema kwangu mimi kuishi Because unless you put the word Christ in that sentence Maana Kristo asipokapatikana kwenye hiyo sentence Then all you can say at the end of that phrase Basi mwisho wa semi hilo is to die is lost Ya kwa Whereas Paul said for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Na Paul anasema kwangu mimi kuishi ni Kristo kufa ni faida. And so faith in Jesus Christ Aimani katika Kristo Yesu is the foundation for our being mediators in our home between ms- our family and the Lord. Ndio msingi wetu kuwa wapatanishi kati ya sisi na jamii yetu na Mungu. A mediator will be a father who is devoted to the Lord. Ya kwamba mpatanishi atakuwa baba But look at verse 1 again. Angalia tazama aya kwanza tena. Because a mediator is also a man of God who receives direction from the Lord. Ya mpatanishi pia ni mtu wa Mungu ambaye pata mwongozo kutoka kwa Mungu. In the rest of verse number 1, katika hiyo aya kwanza, the Bible says the man who walks, the father 
who walks in obedience to the Lord. The fear of the Lord is your inward life. Walking in obedience to the Lord is what your family sees. It's what your son and sons and daughters see. Here's a picture in Psalm 128 of a father who is using the Lord and his word as a map. And every father needs a map. <laughs> Although a lot of us fathers never want to admit when we're lost. Has, has anyone ever had your wife try to tell you you were going the wrong direction? You missed the turn. You missed the turn. We're going in the wrong direction. And what do you say to your wife? I know where I'm going. I don't need a map. I don't need a GPS. I know a shortcut. <laughs> and often we end up lost. Because we don't want to admit when we need help. And there may be fathers here this morning listening or you may know fathers you will minister to someday who have lost their way they are no longer intercessors or mediators between God and their families they're off the path they stray they've wandered far away from God's will and God's will for their families what you need to do is get back on the map and use, this, and use this conference as an opportunity to be guided by the ways of the Lord again to make a course adjustment a godly mediator is a father who is devoted to the Lord who receives direction from the Lord and then verse number two a godly mediator is a father who works for the Lord. How many fathers do we have in the congregation tonight? today? Can you raise your hand? How about those of you outside the tent? How many fathers? It's a lot of dads. I love it. <laughs> do you notice what verse 2 says to these godly fathers? It says you will eat the fruit of your labor one of the greatest examples a godly father can set for their children and this is part of the idea of being a mediator for your family is to teach our children that there's something deeply satisfying about work about labor there's something about work. There's something about labor. When a man works and earns what he receives, he, he knows that what he has in his hands or in his possession is something he deserves. Because he's worked hard for it. He's worked hard for it. He's put in honest labor for it. And how many of you would agree with me if I said there's nothing wrong with honest work? Amen. 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 Do you know in my country, there is a segment, a large segment of our culture, <laughs> who I'm convinced think there's something sinful about work. They want to do as little work as possible. But do you know there's a scriptural principle in God's word that long before sin entered into the Garden of Eden, God put, God put his blessings on labor. And, and any attempts that we as fathers make to be mediators in our families will be undermined 
if we as fathers are not doing all that we can to provide for our families. Amen. Amen. Now, the Bible also teaches that fathers should not go overboard and, and work so much that we neglect our families. A man named Peter Lynch once said this. He said, I never knew of a man who said on his deathbed, I wish I had spent more time at work. Does that make sense? Maybe. Most of us say when we're dying or when we're close to death, I wish I had spent more time with the Lord. I wish I had spent more time with my family. And so the first thing we learn about becoming fathers who are mediators from Psalm 128 is that God blesses the father who fears the Lord who walks, who walks in obedience to the Lord and who sets an example in their work for their children. Number two, a second characteristic I see in Psalm 128 that relates to fathers as mediators is that a father who is a mediator will be a family man. I've learned that the hard way. What have I learned the hard way? that children will not listen very long to a father who treats their families as if they are unimportant. And I love how the psalmist states this in verses 3 and 4. He's talking about family and the importance of family. And he says, this man who is blessed, this father who walks in obedience to the Lord, when he does that, when he does that, his wife will be like a fruitful vine in the house. And his children will be like olive shoots around the table. And I want to explain to you what he means. If you look back one, Psalm to Psalm 127 and find verse number 3. Psalm 127 verse 3. And I am sure in this crowd this is a verse all of us know. It says children are a heritage from the Lord. And offspring are a reward from the Lord. The Hebrew word for heritage. Uh, and some of your translations may say this already. It's the word gift. It literally means property or possession. And what he's saying is that children are the possession of the Lord. Our children belong to the Lord. Our children are gifts from the Lord. And listen, a father who is a good, godly mediator will see their children even at their worst moments as gifts from the Lord. And that can be a hard thing to hear. <laughs> and it can be a hard thing to process or to think about. But the Bible clearly teaches that our children are gifts from, the, from above. Notice in Psalm 127 verse 4. 
that it describes children like arrows in the hands of a warrior. That's what our children who are born in our youth are like. And it's interesting that he compares children to arrows. In the United States, we bow hunt for deer. And how many of you know you cannot hit with an arrow what you are not aiming at? Very simple. Do you know an arrow has to fulfill two purposes for it to be effective? First, first of all, it has to be shot in the right direction. And it must hit the right target. Our children must be shot in the right direction. If we expect them to hit the right target when they mature. So that what's true of an arrow is true of our children. And how many of you would agree that our job as fathers. Is to make sure that from the time our children are born. They are shot in the direction of God the Father. And that the target is their eternal life in relationship with God. I heard a man say one time that the problem with children today or rather the tragedy today is that many children are being launched with, without ever being aimed. And I don't know how it is here in Kenya. But most of the children in the United States are given no spiritual direction by their parents. Most kids in our world today are like the arrow in this poem. It says, I shot an arrow in the air. When it landed, I do not know. Isaiah 38, 19. Would you write that down, please? This is a verse that when I found it in Scripture many, many years ago, I just... I couldn't believe that I hadn't heard it before. Isaiah 38:19 says this. Parents should tell their children about God's faithfulness. Do you know who should lead their children to Christ? Fathers. Fathers. In the home. A father who is a mediator. Will relay godly values from one generation to the next generation to the next generation. And, and you as a father. Are just one link. In a long, long, long chain. From great, great grandfather. To great grandfather, to grandfather, to father, etc. And I want you to remember this. When you're mediating your family, when you're interceding between your family and God the Father, you're not just serving as a mediator and intercessor to those who live in your home. You're serving as a mediator and an intercessor for your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren and your great-great-grandchildren. Children. Because the way you lead your children is the way your children will lead their children, and the way their children will lead their children.
And if I'm going to be a godly mentor between my family and the Lord, or if I'm going to be a godly mediator between my family and members of my own family between themselves. One of the most effective ways I can do that is by my example. It's similar to what we spoke about yesterday, the law of sowing and reaping. I want to ask you a question. And I would like for you to answer it out loud. What is the most effective way to teach your children to read their Bibles? Anybody? Uh, yes. You read the Bible. You read it with them. And you let them sing. You read it on your own. Leading, leading by example. Don't leave it up to the children's pastor to inspire your child to read God's word. That's my job as the father. My children should see me reading God's word whether I'm reading it with them or just by myself. If I want my child to serve the Lord, I need to go to church with them, bring them to church, not just drop them off at church. The father who is a godly mediator will set the tone by example, not just by what we say. The last thing I want to share with you this morning is this. Number three. A father who is a godly mediator will realize there is more to the life of their families than just today. That is, a godly mediator who is a father will realize their children's eternal destiny is at stake. Because it says in verse number 5 of Psalm 128, May the Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Now he's writing there for primarily a Jewish audience. And when he makes reference to Zion, he's speaking of Zion. It's the political center. It's where David's palace was. The, the political center of the Jews' national life at the time of King David. And then when he talks about the prosperity of Jerusalem, the location Jerusalem. He's speaking of the social center of their lives at that time. And so God's promising the Father here in Psalm 128 who will put his faith in the Lord and be the kind of man God calls him to be who will be obedient to the ways of the Lord I believe God's promising this man national blessings. Why is that? Why do good fathers bring blessings to a nation? It's because when fathers set a godly example in their homes, that is the quickest and most effective way to impact a nation. It invariably lifts the level and the standards not only of that home and not only of their family, but of the entire nation. 
nation. And I would just say to you this morning that if we're going to have revival in the United States of America, if you're going to have revival in the nation of Kenya, and the Lord knows, the Lord knows, if there's ever a time we need revival in all of our nations, it's now. But if we're going to have those kinds of revivals, we're going to have to have a revival among the men of the nation. And so his future is blessed from above. And then finally in verse 6, Na aya sita ambadae, this godly mediator who is a father baba ambayo ni mpatanishi, will have a family whose future is blessed. Atakuwa na jamii ambao siku za usoni imebarikiwa. Thank you, brother. May you see your children's children. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May you see your children's children serve the Lord. And you know what the children's children are, don't you? That's our grandchildren. Who we get to spoil. And feed them full of candy and sugar and then send them back home <laughs> all hyper all worked up excited I love my grandchildren I have six and one of the greatest joys of my life is that my three children and two of their spouses and four of my grandchildren all serve the Lord faithfully. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The only reason the other two do not serve the Lord faithfully they cannot speak in complete sentences yet. <laughs> They're very, very, very young. But we intend to be a mediator for them between God the Father and, and, and His plan for their eternal destinies. One paraphrase of scripture of, ver, of verse number six says this. May you live to enjoy your grandchildren. Now how many of you have grandchildren? Uh, wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have I showed you pictures of my grandparents or of my grandchildren? Someone said to me one time, did I ever show you pictures of my grandchildren? And, and I said to them, no and thank you. <laughs> because we grandparents have thousands of pictures of our grandchildren we like to show. I have many on my cell phone. Today at some point I will get to FaceTime with my two youngest grandchildren. And they are gifts. They are gifts. There are times I feel convicted because I have not been the mentor to my grandchildren and children that I should have been. But for a man of God, conviction should never be a negative thing. This is how God, one of the steps God uses to conform us to the image of his son Jesus. Some of you here are bringing up, you're raising up your grandchildren. And I would just like to say to every grandfather here, thank you. Thank you for the model that you are to your grandchildren and to your son and to your daughter. Those of you, and there are many in my church back home, many grandparents who bring their grandchildren to God's house because the parents will not do so. 
na mababu zao maana wazazi wao wangeweza kuwaleta Thank you grandfathers. Asante mababa wazee. Thank you great grandfathers. Asante wale ambao wani mababu wa mababu for being mediators between God the Father and your grandchildren. May God bless you for that. There is a pastor named James Merritt and he said something that I believe with all of my heart. He said every person needs two fathers. In Luke chapter 2 is where he based this thought. This is when Jesus was 12 years old and he was in the temple. His mom and dad had left Jerusalem thinking that he was in the company of someone else probably. That he was probably with some family. But after one day's journey they realized where's Jesus? Has anyone ever left their children at church and gone home? <laughs> I've done that before. That's the similar situation in Luke chapter 2. They went back to look for him. And it took them three days to find him. There's an old evangelist who used to say, every day you walk away from Jesus, it'll take you three days to get back to him. He got that idea from Luke chapter 2. But do you remember? You remember, do you not? When his father and mother finally found Jesus, they said, Son, why have you treated us like this? We have been searching for you. She's talking about Joseph there. Your father and I have been searching for you. And Jesus said, Why were you searching for me? And I want you to finish the verse for me, okay? Jesus said, Did you not know that I would be in my father's, my father's house? Do you see the fathers? Your father, his earthly father, my father, his heavenly father. When Mary spoke and said, your father, he was speaking of Joseph. When Jesus said, my father, he was speaking of the heavenly Mary father. Alipo. Abba. The Hebrew word. Neneno la kibrania. The Hebrew word is Av, the Aramaic is Abba. It means Father. Baba. And I would suggest to you in closing, and I'm really closing, Pastor Patrick. Every one of us needs two fathers. Your children need two fathers. They need you, and they need your Heavenly Father. Grandfather, great grandfather, would you stand, please? Fathers, when it comes to your kids, they'll put up with your mistakes. They'll put up with your inconsistencies. If they know deep down that you love God with all of your heart. And that you love them. And so for every father here, I want to pray. And would you pray with me? Our dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. We thank you for your presence by your Spirit. And I suspect, Father, that there are 
fathers in this sanctuary today who feel as though they are not doing a good job as a mediator. And I join with them because there are seasons in life when I have not been a good mediator. And I pray this morning as we have been reminded of the profound influence fathers have on the lives of their children. And Father, just as you guide us, I pray that you'd empower us, that you would inspire us to be earthly fathers who are called to be mentors. Provide us with biblical wisdom. Provide us with spiritual encouragement and anointing to our natural children and even to and even to our spiritual children. We thank you for the fathers among us this morning who reflect your love and your strength and your guidance. But for those of us who feel we have fallen short, I pray that you would stir the hearts of every father here to respond to the call of God this morning to be, to be godly mentors of our families, and mediators of our families and communities. May we be vessels of your wisdom and understanding and compassion. Fill us with your spirit this morning, O God. We need a fresh anointing, O God. We need the touch of God on our lives to be the men of God you've called us to be. And I thank you for all of these new brothers in Christ to me. And Father, I commit to you that I will pray for these men that they will become the fathers you have called them to be. And that through their mentorship and through their mediation, their children and their grandchildren will impact the nation of Kenya. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Tumpike bwana makofi. Eric bwana fiwe sana. Naomba wale ambao watatuongoza kwa nyimbo waweze kuja hapa. Na niseme ya kwamba Eric Kimenge Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Nataka kuimba wimbo nusu alafu tutatoa missions. Kwa mtu ajiandage andra pesa yake. Kimenge bahasha mko nazo tayari. Na vitu zote ziko tayari.
katika umisheni na wale wanaenda tafadhali hamungeenda mgekuja tumalizie kwa sababu inaweza situa ya kwamba wakati wa kutoa ndiyo tunaenda si poa ama aje pasta si poa e, lakini wale ambao tumejianda na tena tunatoa kwa districts sasa kama watu wako wameenda itakuwa e, wacha tuone vile watu wamekuja sasa karika majimbo na secretary atakuja hapa akiwa na list ambayo iko kwa magazine ndio asaidie kuita na tusaidie kupokea pesa tuko na naibu askofu yeye ndiye atajua vile atagawanya hiyo katika kupokea lakini tunataka tulete mambo na missions in the side of missions sisi wanaume tumejicommit in missions wewe utaongea kiongea kiingereza Kiswahili <laughs> In missions as men fellowship kifika ni misheni kama idara ya wanaume we commit ourselves to riji to ahead hivi and we are looking forward na tunatazamia hii uh in the next five years katika miaka mitano ijayo we enter more into missions tutaingia ndani katika umisionary because in our headquarters kwa sababu katika headquarters zetu our archbishop and his team 
as governor they are talking of missions and opening more churches you want to double our churches and there are problems that are coming with that maendeleo mashida uh, following that that we have many churches and I want to call Bishop Kuria to tell us about the churches that we have some are under trees others are kwa shida shida ama ni bishop Charles atamarika and they, they need a lot of money to do that work. Do we have people who have applied to have fellows, to have help to build churches? Is, do you have enough money as the general treasurer to give? Or Je, you need our help to partner with you to build churches? <laughs> Je, how, how, is the, how is the situation? On behalf of our general superintendent and our national team, the vision that we have for the Kenya Assemblies of God is to plant 800 churches per year. On an average, we have been doing 350 churches for the last four years. And as you know, Assemblies of God World Fellowship want to plant 1 million churches Kama in the, the jua, next uh, up to 2033. Kama yote. So we are part of that vision. Yiyo, maono. Currently we have 400 churches that meet under 3. Kuna makanisa chini ya mti. So the number is, is so huge. Naba ni kubo sana. Currently we are doing 2 churches per district. Every time we do two churches per district, even this morning, there are some churches that went to three districts. But the ones that we have not secured any funding, they are actually more than 400 churches. In the far place of uh, Turkana, Missionary Gabriel has planted over 62 churches in the last like three, three years. And most of those churches are under tree. So I want to respond to you that yes, indeed, we need men because that's our motto. And it is on that spirit that we commit ourselves and we want to do something which we we believe we can even if we build just five semi-permanent churches every year that's what we want to do Katika and, ura, 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 loho, and this seed what we are doing today is part of 2024 planting of churches and therefore without much ado secretary you read. Amen. Bwana Yesu asifiweni. Tunataka kufanya hii kwa haraka sana. Na Amen. Tunataka tuanze na district ya Nairobi. District of Nairobi, director of Nairobi, Jameni, Njooli, yeah, Nairobi, 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 Nairobi Wote, all the, the, the men from Nairobi District, kindly. Nairobi District and the team. Ba, ba. Nairobi District and the team. Nairobi District na team Wote, wana ume Wote, wana Nairobi wasimame hapa, wapange laini. Sante sana, na tutakuata na Roy Tok Tok. Tuende Amboseli, tuende Kitale, tuende Mara. Roy Tok Tok, Amboseli, then Mara. Munapatiana hapa director. What one Nairobi? Team Nairobi Johnny. Wanaume wote mongozo hapa na director tayari ashafika. Ah team ya Nairobi na kuata. Nairobi district. Nairobi district. 
Nairobi district hapana south Nairobi south inakuja Nairobi district only Nairobi, Nairobi south will be coming Nairobi district Nairobi district is 20000 Ah David Tamasa ndikisha na 2000 1000 Santi 1000 Loi tok tok panga line hapa 1000 Bai loi tok tok pangeni line hapa eh 1000 1000 eh waze wa Nairobi 1000 Nairobi Loi tok tok wa patwa na Amboseli tusiega jam tusiega jam tafadhali Loi tok tok wapi assistant director Treasurer wapi pay bill Yo 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 ya pili Pay the promise. Yeah. Pay bill. Enda kwa page number 14. Page number 14. Account ya KAGMF Faith. Ukituma itakuja. Account number. Nairobi. 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 247, 247. Nairobi. Alaku teka account number. Nairobi. Asante. 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 Nairobi. Number Number apana pay bill enda kwa lipa na Mpesa 247247 account number 654047 iko kwa page number 14 page number 14 Hello talk talk Hello talk talk Hello talk talk Hello talk talk Nairobi bado naona wanakuja wako wengi wamekaa huko Hello talk talk wazee wa Hello talk talk mko wapi Loi tok tok. Assista na kwa hapa. 2000. Loi tok tok tafadhali loi tok tok. tok. Wazee wa loi tok tok. Amboseli wapange laini hapa supet. Loi tok tok. Amboseli, amboseli. 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 Oh, le tok tok. Ah. Amboseli. Amboseli. Waja, waja, waja kwanza. Wapi, wapi supet? Amboseli. Eh, kitale. Kitale next. Kitale. Wazewa wana... kitale. Wanafuatu wana mara. Wazewa kitale. Eh, na vile walikuwa wengi. Ini. Ini. Ini kitale. Kitale. Watu wa kitale. Mara, mara. Watu wa mara. Jabit. Wanafuatwa na Nyandarua. Bungoma South next. Waze wa mara. Nairobi South next. Kwa ni wazee wa meanda wapi? Watu wa mara. Jimbo gani? Kitale. Hiyo ni gani? Kitale. Kitale. Ehe. Mara. Mara, mara wakuje. Aya mara. Faith promise. Account ni 247247. 247247. Yen pay bill number account number 654047 654047 654047 Pungoma South Kuja 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 Nyandarwa Nyandarwa kwanza Acha wa mara moja Amboseli ojeleta Acha leta Mara Nyandarwa Mnatuma 2000 endelea leta watu wako watu wa Nyandarua 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 wanafuatwa na Bungoma South mara mara ndio hiyo Bungoma South Nyandarua alafu Bungoma South Nairobi South Nairobi South ndio next Mount Kenya West 
Wanafuatwa na Moise Bridge. Nyandarwa. Nyandarwa. Bungoma South. Lambisia. Wapi Bungoma South? Nairobi South kuje kwanza basi. Alex. Nairobi South patia South. Mount Kenya West Moise Bridge X. Okay, Nairobi South Moise Bridge Nairobi South Wapi Mount Kenya West Kiferu Fuatu na Mungia Tukwa Nairobi West Na, Mount Kenya West Nairobi oh, Nairobi South Nairobi South Nairobi South Nairobi South Nairobi South, Nairobi South. South, 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 Mount Kenya West. South, South, Mount Kenya West. South, South, Mount Kenya West. Mount Kenya West. Mount Kenya West. South, South, Gan Nyandarwa Nyandarwa rudisha Nyandarwa Nyandarwa Wanafuatwa na Moise Bridge Account ni 247247 Eh Mount Kenya West. Mount Kenya West. Mount Kenya West. I love Moist Bridge. Sasa ndiyo. Wewe ni? Wacho saidiwa na uyo. Aya, Moist Bridge. Later back. Moist Bridge. Wanafuato na Mumias na Naivasha. Moist Bridge. Bridge, Moist, Moist Bridge. Mumias Moist next. Bridge. Mumias. Naivasha. Mumias. Mumias. Naivasha. Naivasha. Mumias. Mumias. Ayuko. Ayuko. Mumias. Who Naivasha? Who Naivasha? Oh, Naivasha. Naivasha. Naivasha man. Naivasha. Wanafuatu wana kakamega. Naivasha. Naivasha man. Naivasha. Naivasha. Kakamega. Sio kakamega no. Kakamega. Nyawururu. Naivasha. Sao. Kakamega. 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 Naivasha. Kakamega. Asante. 5,000. Asante. Naivasha. Ndiyo yu. Kakamega. Ah. Kakamega. Kakamega. Wanafuatu wana nyawururu. Naivasha. Hii ni gani? Naivasha. Naivasha, naivasha, naivasha. Eh, senior. Naivasha, hii ni anagasha? Naivasha, hii ni naivasha. Kakamega. Hii ni naivasha. Hii ni naivasha. Naivasha. Kakamega, kakamega. Kakamega. Kakamega ndi yao. Kakamega. Ah, sante. Eh, nyawururu. Nyawururu. Nyahururu 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 Nafuatu wana nakuru Nakuru uwasingisho Angalia tu kwa magazine directors Natuitia directors walio inje Mkwa taita wale walio inje Directors Supet haitwe Supet Nita supet 
Asante. Nyahururu. Nyahururu. Nakuru. 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 Wasingishu. Mungoma East. Nakuru, nakuru, nakuru. Wazewa nakuru. Wazewa nakuru. Wazewa nakuru. Aya. Eh, nakuru. Mumias amekuja sasa. Ah, Mumias. Tafuta baasha ya Mumias. Wapi Mumias? Eh? Mumias. Ini nakuru. Aya, uwasingishu. Nakuru ameisha. Ameisha. Aya, uwasingishu. Nakuru bado wako. Mumias wako. Leta baasha ya Mumias. 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 Eh, Mumias. Wameisha. Mumias wameisha. Oh, nakuru. Leta nakuru. 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 Mumias. Aya, apa ni wa? Uwasingishu. Uwasingishu. Yeah, you're right. Uwasingishu. 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 247. Pastor Shuko Saidiya. Uwasingishu. 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 Bungoma East. Uwasingishu. Bungoma East. Wanafuatu wa na Kisumu City. Bungoma East. Love Transmara. Bungoma East. Bungoma East. Bungoma East. Ako wapi? Bungoma East. Bungoma East. Eh. Eh, Bungoma East. Bungoma East. Karibu. Bungoma East. Bungoma East. Bungoma East. Kisumu 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 Watu ya city Kisumu Kisumu Wanafuatu na Transmara Kisumu Kiambu West Kisumu 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 ingine iku hawa nyuma Kisumu 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 Transmara 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 Pandei Kiambu West Pandei Yungine Michael Transmara Hey, Bungoma. Bungoma East. Transmara, Transmara. 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 Kisumu. 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 Kiambu West. Aya Transmara here. Kiambu West. Santi. Wanafuatu wana Butere na Mombasa. Kiambu, Kiambu West. Butere na Mombasa Kiambu. wakwe standby. Kiambu West. Yes. Butere na Mombasa. Kiambu Next. Kiambu West. Kiambu West. Butere. Butere. Ashika. Kiambu West. Hmm? Kwenu wa Butere. Kwenu wa Butere. Butere, director. Director, yuko. Director, yuko. Butere, butere. Butere, mungine. Mombasa. Mombasa. Mombasa, wanafuatu wana kimi nini? Mombasa, wanafuatu wana kimi nini? Mombasa, ashika, duya mekuja. Butere, ndi huyo. Kudisha butere. Director, mekuja. Director, butere. Butere weka hapa. Kiambu West. Katia na Kiambu West. 
Kiambu West. Kiminini. Aya. Mombasa sasa. Mombasa. Sante. Alafu wafuato na South Coast. Mombasa. 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 Wenyeji. Mombasa. 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 Butere leta. Butere. Leta butere. Mombasa. Butere. Ah. Kiminini sasa. Eh, hiyo. Kiminini. Kiminini. Leta box ya kiminini. Oh, sorry. Weka box. Kiminini. Santi. Kiminini. Kiminini. Kiminini district. Kiminini. South Coast. Mombasa. Yoi Mombasa. South Coast na Kericho. Mofuatane. South Coast na Kericho. Oguna. South Coast. South Coast wako wapi? Alafu na North Coast. South Coast Kericho na North Coast. South Coast. South Coast wako wapi? Kiminini. Kiminini. South Coast. South Coast Kericho. South Coast. South Coast wakuje sasa. Yes, tuna inaingia. Inaingia naona. Zote zikiingia nini. Ah, tutatuenda through. Sijali. Haya, haya, haya. South Coast. South Coast. South Coast wakuje. Hawako? Oguna. South Coast. Haya, tuende Kericho. Kericho. Kericho Aya, North Coast North Coast Kameta North Coast sasa wakuje Weka tukani Weka tukani North Coast North Coast Ndiyao Ndiyo nyi North Coast Hiya pili KGMF Faith kama unatuma kwa mission andika hapo kwa hiyo ya KHMF Faith. And then itumweke kwa hiyo. Another cost. Another cost. Busia ifuate. Busia na Eastern. Another cost. Busia kwa standby na Eastern. Aya. Another cost. Santi. Busia 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 wakuje Busia Director Yoi Santi Santi Busia 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 Kenya kwa Kenya ingine Eastern Ofuatwe na Kajiado na Maragua stand by Eastern Eastern. What was South Coast in Wangoja, Oguna? In Eastern, Eastern, Kwanza. Eastern. 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 Wakuje. Eastern. Eastern. Twende Kajiado. Kajiado. Aya South Coast wakuja kama wako tayari. Walikuwa wamepitwa. South Coast oguna. Neta South Coast. South Coast. South Coast wakuja kwanza basi. Ndiyawa. Aya South. Eh? 
Eastern, later Eastern. Ah, yeah. South Coast. South Coast. South Coast. South Coast. South Coast of Asia. Aya, tuende Kajiad, Maragua. Kajiado. Kajiado hiko. Kajiado. Kajiado. Kuna Kajiado. Aya, Maragua basi. Maragua. 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 Machakos. Ofuatwe na Machakos na Turkana Central. In that order. Ini. Maragua. 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 Maragua, Machakos. Machakos. Azakayo Kusonga. Macha. Maragua. Maragua ingine. Machakos. Machakos. Masaku. Machakos. Maragua. Machakos. 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 Machakos apa? Machakos. 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 Trukana Centro. Trukana Centro. Wafuatwe na Matungu. Wafuatwe na South Lake. Trukana Centro. Trukana Centro. Sant. Sant. Trukana Centro. Yes. Trukana Centro. Trukana. Trukana Centro. Hey. Machakos. 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 Inia Machakos. Trukana Centro. Matungu. Matungu. Na South Lake. Matungu wa Fuate. Sao. Matungu. Matungu wa Matungu. Matungu. Ya skofu mwenye. Matungu. Yo yo. Matungu. South Lake. 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 Kiambu East. South Lake. Of what we're Kiambu East. South Lake. Nakitui. Kiambu West. No, Kiambu East. Kiambu East. Kiambu, Kiambu East. East. Na Kitui. Kiambu East. Iko mtu wa Kiambu East. Malikuwa. Uh, Kitui. 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 Hey, watu wako wakuji. Kitui, Kitui, Kitui. Kitui. Nini Kitui? Kitui. Kiambu East. Kiambu East. Kitui Watu wa Kitui Director na Itana Kiambu East Kiko mtu wa Kiambu East Sini kuambia Umetuma Naka Kiambu East Kiambu East Ndiyo hii Kitui 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 
Kwa fuatu na Endebes na Laikipia na Narok East. Kitui. 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 Endebes. 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 Na, na Bangi. Kwa fuatu na Narok South. South. Narok West. West. East. 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 Trukana South, uh, Narok North, Narok North, Narok North, Narok North, Koshal. Metuma. Aye. Yeah. Narok North. What to a Narok North was the dish? Narok North. Narok North. What to a Narok North? Aye, twende Trukana South. Ya wa nakuja Narok North. Nakuja. Mount Elgon. Trukana South na Mount Elgon. Trukana South. Trukana South. Oh, you do a kwaga. Trukana South. Trukana South. Trukana South. Sant. Mount Kenya, Mount Elgon. Mount Elgon Masai. Mount Elgon. Mount Elgon. Nakuru, Nakuru. Mount, Mount Kenya East. Mount Elgon, Mount Kenya East. Mofuatani. Milima, milima, milima zifuatani. Mount Elgon. Mount Kenya East. Mount Kenya East. Yeah. Aye. Mount Kenya East Sant Mount Kenya East Nakuru South Mount Kenya East Mount Kenya East Mount Kenya East Mount Kenya East Sant Nakuru South Mount Kenya East. Mount Kenya East. Mount Kenya East. Ah, Nakuru, Nakuru South. South. Nakuru South. Elementaita. Ofuatu na Siaya. Vihiga. Uwaso. Philip. Elementaita, what elementaita kwanza? Elementaita. Nakuru South. Nakuru South. Nakuru South. Elementaita. 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 Siaya. Siaya. I love Siaya. Siaya 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 Twende vihiga Iwaso Iwaso aya uwaso Ameka kwa simu Andika Andika yuko tasi yake Cherengani 
Cherengani wafuatwe na Kapenguria Cherengani na South Nyanza. Cherengani. Cherengani. Aya Kapenguria. 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 Kapenguria basi ya watu 40 leta watu yako. Kapenguria. Yoyo. Hmm. Kapenguria. Kapenguria. Nandi. Kapenguria. Nandi. South Nyanza. Nandi. John John. Aya kabla kabla alambisi aleta Bungoma South. Leteni tafuta karatasi ya Bungoma South. Alikuwa yuko. Sawa, andika tu. Watu wako wanazindikisha ita wa Bungoma South kwanza. Watu ya Bungoma South. Shika. Oh, weka Bungoma South. Tafuta. Aya tuende Nandi. Nandi, aya. South Nyanza kwanza, South Nyanza. South Nyanza South Nyanza South Nyanza South Nyanza Wewe ni Eh South Lake usha tu masao Mingi saidia huko South Nyanza Nandi mko tayari Nandi Njogona Nandi Sawa Nyotumwa Twende Gusi Gusi Alafu Samburu mwisho Gusi 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 Edu Gusi Oni Samburu Samburu Samburi Gusi iko wapi? Haya Samburu. Samburu Kakamega North. Samburu. Samburu. Kakamega North. Haya Kakamega North. Kakamega North. Wafuatwe na Kitale East. Kakamega North. Kakamega North. Askofu yake ni Leon na Kakamega North. Yeah. Asko? Kitale East. Ini kakamega? Ah, Kitale East. Wewe toa hii. Yako ni gani? Hii ni Kitale East. Hii ni Kitale East. Sawa, watu wako? Sawa. Tumeashata. Kitale East. Kitale East na kakamega North. I think you are done. Asante Bishop, tumemaliza. Reverend Kyle.